Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode four of Echo. Things had kind of stabilized a little bit. I really enjoyed the pace, the structuring, and just kind of the way the last two episodes have been presented, how they felt. Even the action, I thought, has been a massive improvement. And I'm excited to see where things go, especially considering how we left off the last episode. So let's go ahead and jump in. If you want to see the full length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or Forgot Marvel's channel. Get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes and reaction the entire episode. Get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies react to each month. We got all the QAs, behind the scenes footage to try to make it worth your while. Should you are going to waste support channel. But guys, at the end of the day, really appreciate it enjoy this reaction at least leave a like drop a comment subscribe if not already because it really helps these videos out and with that all said now the way let's go ahead and hop into episode four our penultimate episode here we go 2008 hi what are you having huh which one use your words oh my god oh no kingman's gonna kill this ice cream dude <laughs> You could already hear his heavy, frustrated ass breathing. Wait here, Maya. Uncle has something he needs to do. <laughs> Sir, meet my car door. God damn, dude. I'm pretty sure that guy's dead, though. <laughs> yes, I need a new jacket. I don't want my hand. Oh. What did you expect? Where she's just gonna have her wait in the car? For somebody to deliver you a jacket? What was the plan? Don't be afraid. No! Oh, oh, oh God, it was just like him when his dad, well, I mean, she did this of her own accord. Instinctually, she did that. But it was almost like his, his dad when he was teaching him to kick a man while he's down. Damn. 2021. Your tutelage has come to an end. You're ready to move from the theoretical to the practical, you and I. We are the only ones we can trust. That's your final lesson. You're dismissed. Oh, I saw that fucking Dexter asshole. Wow, I mean, I, I would expect no less considering she would have so much intel just between their conversations alone. There's no way she was just going to be walking back out into the, the world. That sucks, though. You know, I'm a, I mean, the only thing I can assume in, in this situation, too, is during the blip, you know, Vanessa got blipped. But for present day, then... Some questions arise there. But she did survive the series, right? And he was going to jail. I still want to know how that all connects. What in the world? The fuck? Oh, whoa, what the? Can we please talk? Oh! Well, that's nifty. A gift. I commissioned a few accessories. I thought it was important that we could communicate with no go-between. Dead. Yes, you made that very clear in New York. I thought that... We could have a Sunday family dinner, like we used to. Interesting. <laughs> it's 
not the, not the point. Maybe not even the time right now, but still. Is this a, like a final meal or is this just him like, hey, that's what families do. They fight and is he just here to forgive? I don't know, we'll see. I'm not angry with you, Maya, despite the little souvenir you left. Oh, wow. But you did what you thought you had to, just like I taught you, and I was impressed. I think there's a part of you that's happy that I'm still alive. Oh, but your face, it told another story just now yeah. when you saw me. Always had your back. Even then, I couldn't stand when you would get hurt. Didn't have her father's back, though. That's for damn sure. Stabbed that. On your head. He doesn't want her reconnecting with her family because he, he, he wants to make sure she stays his, I feel like. The kind of grimace he gave when he like just looked at her family photos what happened to the lafette <laughs> hey i don't blame her don't trust anything he brought it came highly recommended <clears throat> cookies from the vein are they still your favorite good so i guess the bullet missed his eye. I mean, his eye's intact. Could be bionic, could be regrown, could be cloned. We don't know. But it looks like it hit right through there, just under the the eyeball itself. Mm. <laughs> He's gonna hand it to you, though. This is all an exercise in one Trust slash manipulation, maybe a little of both. Um, I don't know. We know when he loves somebody, he's he gets weird. I have a proposition. You want an empire. You'll have it. You can have everything. All you have to do is come home with me. I'm leaving to New York this weekend. Until then, I'm at the Chakta Casino. I'll be waiting for you. I hope you're on that plane. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Wait, you had dinner? <laughs> He's like, what Please the fuck? Tell me, you're not that stupid. I know you can. That's what scares me. You know why I'm 45 and alone? Because everyone I cared about was taken away by him. Mm. After your father died. I tried to get out. Fisk threatened to kill me, so I came back here and did his dirty work. Damn, yeah. Sorry. I was confused. Scared. No. Choose your family, Maya. Which one are you going to choose? Oh, she's getting these flashes, too. Guess that would make sense. Oh, and they're getting them together. I wonder if that was what was happening to her when she was with Biscuit. Because, yeah, because Maya had that same flicker, and then that's when she got jumped. Maya? Are you okay? Maya? Right? Or was that after? Sorry. I wonder why this is all happening now. Oh. Sh shit. She was gone, gone. There's something going on. Chola can help you. Go on now. No. Peace offering. Something to.
I like that she calls it pop. Makes me feel validated. Okay, so it, it was coming back here that triggered it, seemingly. You describe me. It's what I saw. I'm a thing. I gave birth. Oh. Doctors at the hospital found complications with my pregnancy. Me and the baby, your mother, we were both in danger. My family took me out of the White Hospital. Brought me to a wife. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. The branches are like the, the cavern. I hardly say they were always with me. They had an oh. ability to know when they were truly needed. They're reaching out to help. Oh. That night with your mother and I, it was a life or a death ordeal. Oh, is that what's going on with Maya right now? Whatever she's, whatever path she's on is life or death. The Loa came into this world and set about oh. lifting the pain of others. Loa. She had a gift. Her mother. She was a healer. When your mother was killed, my arms shattered. I wanted to die. I couldn't bear to be alone. So much alike. And Generations are echoing. Echoing. <laughs> what did you do yourself? <sighs> oh. How'd that go? Hey, at least she 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 tried. Could be too little too late, but I mean it's it's better late than never. It's the first step at least towards understanding and healing potentially. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to forgive, forget or down in the river to pray. Let's go down, come on down, down in the river to pray. Yeah, I'd say there's something here to fix Pokey's truck. Everything the light touches is yours. <laughs> and if I'm lying, Lola always says there's nothing too broke to fix. If you want it bad enough, Yo. don't throw it away. That, uh, that applies itself to a lot of things going on right now, doesn't it? Oh, is she making her? Dude, look at that. Aww. Oh, shit. <sighs> hmm. Somebody already been in here, or is the door just cracked for her? I suspect you've come to kill me. Again. <laughs> I can't remember a time when I haven't loved you like a daughter. A monster. Mm. You knew what you were part of at every turn. I mean... All the people you killed for me. Yeah. Did you plead for their lives? I ask you. He's got a fucking boy. He's the monster.
I was there for you. She got him there. I know now that I failed you. The same as my father failed me. I keep this with me. It's to remind myself of where I come from. Is it the hammer? Before the reminders were the cufflinks, the kingpins. It's the hammer! My father felt stronger when he beat my mother until I got strong enough to stop him with that. Yep. I killed him to be free to move forward in my life. Now you do the same. So enough games. Here. Oh Free wow. Go ahead. Oh wow. Free me. You and I, Maya. We've come full circle in the morning. Come home. Or he did have a really good point though. I mean, I guess maybe she deluded herself into why and what she was doing because of, you know, him coming in to help her family. Part of her had to have known. Oh. That last shot of her mother. Okay. Ooh. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Fisk. We tailed her, but she's gone. All right, what now? What now? Oh my God, where does that leave us, dude? This was a fascinating episode. You know, her reconnecting with her grandmother, learning about the ancestors calling forth. So whether or not it has anything to do with Maya herself, they're presenting themselves at a time when things are circling the drain or things are becoming volatile or whatever. Whenever they are needed, they are coming forth they are forcing themselves upon the present, the living, to try to protect them, to help them, to guide them, to give them the strength that they need. It's still interesting to see those roots, and I do hope we explore that. And I, then I just what makes me wonder, like, how is this going to manifest finally for Maya? And this is going to be something that is temporary or exclusive to this moment? Are they always with us? Is this something that she will carry on in perpetuity once she kind of knocks down that that barrier. I'm very curious to see how that unfolds. You know, obviously I still want to explore a little bit more of, of who they were prior. Like what is that cave? What is this water? What were they people, the people before they became human? I want to know all of that. And I don't know if we'll, we'll get all of that. I mean, we got one episode to go in this. Some of those answers aren't completely necessary for the story that is being told. It's just purely for me and the things that have been set up for us to explore some of these things. But now it's come down from Maya to try to choose what family she's going to side with. Is she going to side with Kingpin, who she now really, all the illusions she's had and has built up in her head over the years as a child under his care have been broken down, dispelled. And he's trying desperately to maintain that connection because, you know, he does love her in his weird sycophantic way. Now, though, she's reconnecting with her people, with her family. She's started this road towards reconnecting with her grandmother once they finally sat down to talk after all these years. And again, that's a difficult conversation to have and it's a difficult emotion to overcome, especially after such a long time. But now it's come down to what do I do? Where do I go from here? Who am I really? Am I what he made me? Or have I always been this? Or should I go give in to where I came from? I don't know. It's just like a really interesting dichotomy that is at war within her right now. And if we take the, the grandmother's words at face value, like she said, they arise, they show themselves at a point of life and death. So it makes me wonder if whatever Kingpin has cooking up or brewing in the background, maybe it's Maya directly, or maybe because she left, maybe he'll turn and inflict that ill will on her hometown. Maybe he won't give her a place to return to. 
Maybe he'll decimate this place, burn it to the ground. She'll have nowhere else to turn but to him. But that would also just drive her towards, you know, resenting him even more, I would imagine. So I don't know if he'll do that. But he also does have these extreme outbursts of rage. That's who he's always been. And I love that he told the truth to her now. He's like, hey, just like I did with my father, expel yourself, free yourself. And this is how I did it. Told her the truth. And he's the one that had to stand up to his father and killed him. And again, though, he made a good point. She's not completely free of fault in this moment. You know, as much as she had this idea of him built up in her head over these years and all this stuff, like what she was doing, he, he's like what she was doing, what he was having her do, what she saw, what she's witnessed, what she knows was counter to all of that. But she still went along with it. She killed people for him. The blame is shared. It's not like one way or the other in this situation. And we saw like even before he took her in, she saw and observed what her father was doing. She just turned a blind eye because family. I don't know. I'm curious how this all is going to bubble up to the surface, how this is going to resolve itself. What's going to happen next? Where is she going? Is she on her way back to New York? You know, she won't fly there with him, but she will go there on the ground herself, maybe meet him at the airport, maybe meet him in his home turf, get this fight away from her family. I don't know. Or maybe she's just purely running around uh, running away from all of this because, you know, she learned that this all started when she came back to the, her hometown. So maybe she thinks once she leaves this place, it'll, it'll, it'll wrap all that up. I don't know. The acting in this episode was really, really well done. I love, again, how much emotion is coming through through the signing, through these performances, you know, from everybody that has learned this language. I don't know if they learned it for this roles or a lot of them knew it going into this, but I love the way that it's playing into the story because honestly, I feel like there's some people that are probably going to look down on that and having to read the subtitles because they don't know ASL and all that stuff. But I honestly find it extremely fascinating how well this is being told this way. And I love that that's so validating in a, in a way for this medium, for this language and for that to be shown, to be seen, love all of that. And speaking of that, it goes to show as well just how incomplete his self-proclaimed love for her really is when she was like, how much did you love me? You never, you never made yourself learn ASL so that we could communicate. You talked through somebody else. You never took the time to connect with me that way yourself. You did it through someone else. Or now even he's doing it through this program. He's like skipping steps to manipulate the situation, but that's just how he's been raised. That's how he sees relationships. That's how he sees these dynamics. And still, I don't know what the fuck happened to Vanessa, but like he said, all this time, it's just being me and you. There's some questions that I have about how this threads together. Cause hell, they, they beyond what the guy said, you know, the showrunner, Brad, uh, whatever his face was, the guy that was saying like, hey, we went in this show imagining that the Netflix series was canon. Yesterday, last night, I think, Disney Plus updated the MCU listings and the actual timeline order watch uh, list with all of the Netflix shows, all of the Netflix shows, officially throwing them in line with all the other sacred timeline stuff. So there's still some questions about how that would go. And like, maybe, you know, he could have, obviously, you know, he's got all kinds of different places and stuff like that. Could have other people watching her, maybe not watching her directly because he was talking about mentorship. You know, I don't know that he had her full time, but like it just does beg, beg the question where during those years between 2008 and 2015, where was she? And now where also is, is Vanessa? Because she was alive and he was being carted away in 2015 to prison. All we know is that the shows at least take place after the after 2012, after the New York incident in the Netflix series. I'm not sure exactly how long those span, like from season one to the end of season three. I I'm not sure. I, I don't know if any exact dates were ever given in the show. So I'm just wondering, and maybe you guys can probably piece this together better than I, get, I do, because I don't know it as intimately, probably as, as I could or as I should. So I'd love to hear from you guys. How do you feel like this all fits together? There are some gaps, but obviously things change. Who knows? Maybe they never reunited. Maybe something happened to Vanessa. Maybe someone killed her in the interim while he was locked up before he could escape and get back out and get back onto the streets. I don't know. I'm very curious about all of that. Guys, what'd you think? How'd you guys feel about the episode? What'd you think about this whole interaction between her and Kingpin 
and love to know your thoughts on the whole timeline. But that said, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you got channel, gives you access as well. And speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, York, Orska, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake and Trail, Eric Official, Casey Wood, and JoJo. Thank you guys so much for your continued support and everybody who's been helping support the channel over there. But that's it for this video, guys. And I'll see you all in the finale of Echo. Take care, everybody.